Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Karen here for Ozone Fine Art Ventures and we just got here to the beach. Another gorgeous day, no sun, bit of rain, but back on the beach. And um, I said I just got here and we were just walking down a little bit and around here. Look at who's saying hello. Oh, it's Lily and an orange ball next to a, a nice little orange jacket. And so starting today off with a beautiful little honey agate. Might be some other stuff on the beach today. We'll see. So the dogs are waiting for me to throw a ball, but it looks to be a little colorful action right here to, from the get-go. Nice little agate with some pretty swirls. All right, we're on the board. Got a little gooey agate here. Check this guy out. Believe it or not, that's an agate. We'll check this one out more at home, but I love these ones. Probably just because they're different. You know, those honey agates are, are always beautiful, but <laughs> you're cool because you're not golden sunshine. You're very different. Okay. So here's a couple of kind of neat looking jaspers. Lots of jasper and, you know, silicates that you could call like a, a jagged or a jasper agate on the beach that have a beautiful blend. Um, I'm going to leave that tumbling material for the next person. And sometimes something just catches your eye because it's spazzy. <laughs> and you don't know what you're gonna get when you pick it up. This is a fossil shell, you know, a couple of them. But there was some kind of neat stuff showing there. And you never know. It could be just common fossils in a concretion or it could be something really special. So I always like to pick them up. I like to pick up this stuff with crazy patterns to it. This is a piece of Torito wood. Here's some crazy patterns here too, the dogs. But um, a lot of porous bone looks like this end cut of the Torito wood. So it's worth picking up if it catches your eye. And some of the Torito wood is really beautiful. Like this looks like it's permineralized with some silicates, uh, little pockets of blue in there. So an interesting specimen. That I'm gonna leave here because we've got more gravel to go through. So check out this bad boy. That's fun. You see all the swirls? Can you see all the swirls? <laughs> yeah, that's a fun piece of jasper. Probably has some agate in it too. Very swirly, very fancy. Has some nice colors to it too. I'm gonna have to contemplate maybe taking this one. That might be fun to cut and see what's inside. What do you think? Should I take it? Okay, sharp eyes, sharp eyes. What am I looking for? What am I looking at? Check this out. What's that? What's that? What is it? It's an agate. A little littler than I was thinking, but cute nonetheless. We go. Just saw this little guy. And yeah, that's um you guys know it's one of my favorites. Those spiral shells that you get to dig out of the matrix material. Cool little concretion. Those are always fun. Thinking about Theo again, he might dig that. I gave this one a little flip and there's an even better one for 
to carve out. Excuse me. Excuse me, Hoolies. I'm gonna wash this off here really quick. So, cool matrix material. And then, a lot of times these guys will have a agate towards the top, especially if you see some inclusion of stuff there in the chambers. It's starting to rain, so it makes things like that beautiful spiral shell jump out a little bit faster. And um, then at the same time, it can make being out here a little bit harder. When you're rock hounding, it's like you have to tune your eyes for what you're looking for. Now everything is wet, so a quick retune for the eyes. What do you see? Anything good? Muscle shell, concretions, lots of basalt. As I mentioned before, sometimes it's about the patterns on the rocks. It can be about the texture, and oftentimes about the actual shapes of the overall rock, especially with the concretions. The shape can give away that there's a big pectin scallop type shell inside, a spiral shell, and the round ones might hold something special like a crab. There are also different colors to the matrix materials. Some of them light, having more sand content, some of them darker, having more basalt, etc. This can also help your finding if you know the color of the matrix that may hold the fossil that you're looking for. It's nice when there's a bit of shell or bone sticking out to catch your eyes as well. In any event, you don't know if you don't check it out. So I turn over suspicious rocks and pick them up for better observation, like this stratified sandstone that could have been petrified wood, but a lovely geology story nonetheless. This may be a Catherinella fossil. They're abundant in the Astoria Formation. The hinge on this species is really strong, so one may often find them not only with both halves attached, but also still shut. Some lucky hounds have opened them to find their last meal fossilized inside. It's always fun to see all the different ways that agate forms. <laughs> here's, here's a funny one. Check out that seam. Just blobby. Right on the top there. Pretty cool. What else? Something here too. Another one. You know, is it a coincidence that uh, this nursery rock and that seam were hanging out right here in the same place on the beach? They might have been part of the same uh, geologic action. It's pretty cool. It's a nice, nice bit of silicates there. <laughs> this is cool. Look at this bit of shelly goodness. Yeah, that's some heavy concretion and then you can see that there's some really good permineralization inside this shell and that's a pretty big shell. Who knows how far back it goes and what's that? I mean, what what's that? Is that the top of another shell? That's a good little concretion. That's a keeper. So, this little guy has some interesting little pox on it and obviously has shell but it's got a variety of terrain and pox. So this is going to be our first candidate for the sledgehammer this season I think. I think we should just crack this bad boy open and see what's inside. What do you think? Shall we have some fun with the sledgehammer? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Who do we have here? Nice little club tubular agate. There we go. Candy. The sun has come out a bit and it does make some stuff easier to find. See what I'm looking at? Wait guys. What's that? It's is the tiniest of blue blacks. 
but it is a blue black agate. Whoops. Dogs, dog in the shot. <laughs> Lily likes to go be in the water, even though it was just raining. She's got to cool off apparently. This one not so much. Blending in with the rocks nicely though. It's got basalt camouflage. This time Lily found <laughs> Lily found the agate. Check this out. <laughs> Thanks, Lily. Oftentimes she drops the uh, the ball right in the right place. Let me see if I can't get them. pull this into. Yeah, it's an agate. Each agate. <laughs> Get it in the shot. I don't know, that's like almost a carnelian. That's nice. Thanks, Lily. Woo! What are we here? Bloop, bloop. What's that? <laughs> Just a little, but an agate nonetheless. Golden one. Pretty, pretty. So, sorted material. Littles, little. Bigs, you get the biggers. One way to search. So, one of the uh, cool things that you can find on the beach is ancient wood. And I'm not just talking about the kind that's petrified or the Torito wood. But I'm talking about part of the ancient forest. Ow! You can see that we are at the heart. You can see the, uh, the lines, growth lines going out radially from here. And these are the roots of an ancient tree. Lots of different timelines and lots of different theories on exactly what happened here but the forest was here. Here's another nice ancient thing to be found on the beach. Ah, my favorite. Looks to be some ancient mammal bone of some kind. Look at that. Cell structure and then bone around it. Nice, nice piece. So you ever go, wow, that's some pretty good looking sea, and then, oh wait, that's seagull poop. Yeah. A little public service announcement, don't pick that up. No. Look at this ginormous tree. No. All of this is its root system. Very impressive. Imagine how huge that tree must have stood. So check out this little weird concretion. What is that in there? I don't think it's bird poop. I have to take a closer look at that. That's some blue permineral permineralization. My tongue is cold. My lips aren't working. And um, some black. Could be bone, could be wood. Not sure. Might have to take a look under the microscope on that. All right, to be continued on that one. This is about 50 times magnification. You can clearly see the wood grain and I'm loving these nodules of silicates that formed. Probably in the Torito borehole or an insect hole, some of them just impressions where the nodules or bores were. Remember that crazy beach, Jasper? Yeah, let's cut it. Taking it to the high-tech diamond trusty 10-inch slab saw. A 
opening beautiful rocks from anywhere never gets old. Living up to the name Micro or Crypto Crystalline, under 50 times magnification, we can see the mineral particles that make up this swirly scene. And here's that lovely chunk of a mammal bone. It's a whole other world in there. The pockets of the cellular structure filled with the mineral particles that were readily available. This, looking very much like beach sand under the microscope, captured in those cells. And here's that shell concretion, the Calicantharis carlsoni. I've never cut one in half, so let's do it. This does not disappoint. A perfect view into the elegant ascending chambers of this gracefully constructed shell. A yellow window of calcite is now apparent leading to the uppermost nooks, appearing to have been in mid-growth of some silicate action as well. Whether spying the innermost intimate features of a fossil or contemplating the vast expanse of the timeline and ocean that it came from, it's always a pleasure to hunt for these treasures and learn from them. Thanks so much for coming along on the adventure with us. For more information, go to ozonefineart.com and, of course, keep creating.